we conclude today. Chapter 48. Trying to wrap our minds around God. <laughs> the infinite of God. That which is beyond us. So, as we said, we have the image of uh, a pen you can have in your mind. But God doesn't have the image of something, of us, of creation in him. He doesn't have the image of everything within him. He has the physical thing within him. The globe, the orb of the earth. Not just the, uh, the, the surface, but the inner everything is in him, not outside of him. How do we understand that idea? How do we wrap our minds around that? We can understand that there's nothing outside of God, but how does that work exactly? Now, obviously, we're not going to really get this, because if we were to really get this, then we'd be like God. We can, though, get it because we do have the image of something. And that image exists in my mind because I think it. Right? I have to think it constantly, otherwise it doesn't exist. God has to think of me constantly, otherwise I wouldn't exist. I'd be poof, into nothing. But how is it that, in fact, how do we understand the concept that in fact that I am within God's mind, his thought, and that I'm not outside of that thought, and I'm not just the image of me he maintains. Like, you know, I can only have the image of something that my eyes could perceive that are close enough, right? So if this pen were to be removed and put in the next room, I couldn't have the image of it. Only I, I could have an image because I remember it. So I could remember it and then have that image in my mind. That's true. But if it's not in my periphery, let's say, you know, so I'm not, that image is not in, you know, I have a bookcase over here with books. So the books are in my mind, encompassed in my mind, in my thoughts. But God is not just the image. How do we get that? So, the author that explains that today. Because God, his knowledge, is united with his essence, being that he is the knowledge, the knower, and the known as one. Well, let's explain what that means. From the human condition is, my soul is the knower. My brain is the tool of knowledge. And the known is, hey, I know that I got a pen in my hand. Right? They're three distinct things. Right? And especially the knowledge, the, that which is known, the information is outside of me. It's not of me. So they're separate. The separate distinct things, even the, the, the knowledge, which is the tool that I could be a knower, me, the person, also are separate things. By God, it's all one. Therefore, therefore, this that I know that I have a pen in my hand that's known, it's outside of me. So therefore, the only thing I could have of it in me that I should be aware of is the image of it. That's all I could have is the image of this. Right? As opposed to? As opposed to what? As opposed to God, since the known, because this known fact that I have a pen in my hand and I'm seeing it, I'm looking at it right now, and that image is in my in, encompassed in my mind. By God Almighty, since it's the known as one with him, united in perfect oneness with him, together with the knower and the knowledge, therefore, it's not a, a known thing outside of him, but it is of him. Therefore, when God is creating 
He's creating from him that which is perfectly bound up in one with him. So we're being created by his awareness of us. He's creating something out of that nothingness. The human mind cannot truly comprehend this. That this is the teachings of the Rambam, that God is the knower, the known, and the knowledge as one, perfectly united. And there's debate and discussion about this, which we'll discuss later in, de in detail. But uh, the Alta Rebbe says in a note that the scholars of the Kabbalah agreed with his view as stated in the Pardes of uh, Rabbi Moshe Cardovero and accords with the Kabbalah of the Arizal, the concept of Tzimtzum, which I'll explain soon. But what's important over here is this knowledge is of an infinite order, God's knowledge. It's not described as his knowledge is clothed within the orb of the earth or the orb of any or of the of, of creation right which would be a finite limited light of god that is enclosed in the particular physical thing but it's encircling encompassing even though when we say encircling encompassing it means it's a part of god it's not separate from him not merely the image that is within him but it is the actual physical reality of the thing that encompasses within him right and through that that it's encompassing it, he is creating it something from nothing ex nihilo every moment as explained and that's the end of the chapter Let's unpack this. First, the debate. The debate between the Rambam and the Maharal from Prague. Rambam lived in the uh, 11th, uh, 11th and 12th century. Or, no, the 11th, the, the 12th and 13th, I think he passed away in. 1204, if I'm not mistaken. 1135. I, I don't. He was born. I, I don't. Okay, I don't remember the exact dates. In any case, and the Maharal, who came later. In Prague. Still statues there of him in Prague. If I'm not mistaken. And there's a debate. He disagrees with the Rambam. How could you say about God? that he is give him any definitive or any kind of definition which defines him limits him even if you're going to say that it's totally dissimilar god's knowledge than our knowledge that he is perfectly one with being the knower the known and the knowledge as one and by us it's three it's compartmentalized it's not perfect unity but yet it's a description of something it's, it's a specific attribute, and therefore giving a limitation. And as the Maral says, that how do, we, how do our sages refer to God? They don't refer to him as the intellect, blessed be he. They refer to him as the Holy One, blessed be he. Holy meaning separate. He's separate from any kind of description, any kind of attribute, any kind of uh, um, definition. Oh, that seems to be a good argument of the uh, of the Maharal against the Rambam. So how do you speak to, about God that way? So Hasidis says that they're both right, but they're both speaking about two different aspects of God. I'll put it into my terms. You know, there's God's first name and his last name. There's God, and then there's godliness. God, that the Maharal is talking about is before Tzimtzum, before any kind of contraction on the infinite of God, the Ein Soif, before it's contracted. So yes, on that level, you can't give any definition, any parameters, any kind of limitation to God. 
Therefore, he's the Holy One, blessed be he, the Ein Soif, the limitless one. However, as the Arizal taught us, that there's a concept of contraction. Before the Arizal's teachings, we didn't understand, we only just took a perfect faith, that what? God, the infinite, creates a finite. How? Well, God can do whatever he wants. So we didn't have an understanding of it. We had perfect faith that God is, you know, infinite and, and the world is finite and and he did whatever he did to create a world. The Arizal came in the 16th century and gave us an understanding of this idea called symptom contraction. God contracted his infinite nature and didn't remove it, but hid it. That it should only be encompassing in, it's there within creation, but it's not perceived. And therefore that's what we call it encompassing. It's not affecting in a way that creation in a way that we can experience or have awareness of it. And therefore it's called encompassing. But it's yet there. So we have the limited light and the, in, and the infinite light of God that is beyond any kind of definition. So Maral is speaking before Tzimtzum and the, and the Rambam, Maimonides, is speaking after Tzimtzum, after contraction. After contraction, there are 10 divine attributes. And yes, they have definition. Yes, they have parameters. And therefore, there is limitation. Intelligence and intelligence. Not emotions. Emotions and emotions. Not intelligence. And even in intelligence, you have Chachma bin Avdas. Chabad. Wisdom, understanding, knowledge. And in emotions, you have, you have Chesed and Gvura. You have all sorts of different parameters of the divine emotions. Right? So they're not a contradiction one to the other. Based on the yeah, Arizal's teaching based on how Chassidus explains that, which is important to appreciate. So, what's our take home? Yesterday we spoke about you're never alone. Well, now we have a better understanding how we're never alone. Try to think and meditate upon how God encompasses me and all of creation for that matter, but let's make it personal. He encompasses me in him. He's like, you know, like the mother is holding on to the baby and, 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 and embracing the baby. God's doing that. But where the mother's doing it outside of her, it's inside her of God. Well, where the mother did it inside of her too, in utero, in, in the womb. So that's how we are within God, within the womb. Now the mother doesn't know everything that's going on inside of the womb, but she feels, she knows intuitive connection. It feels very much connected. So we're in the womb. Very much connected. Never alone. So again, if we think about that, we will hopefully, in the challenged moment, um, rise to the occasion. And I'd say, why me? Rather, you'll say, what do you want from me, God? What do you need from me? You're aware that I have the capability to deal with this. Because you're aware of everything. And not only you're aware of everything, because it's inside of you happening, it's part of you. But you are now animating me. Something from nothing at this moment. Just like I can, you know, I had a dream last night, being with my family and, and you know, a gathering. And it was all in my head, in my thoughts. The moment I opened my eyes, 
it evaporated into everything. So God, I am in his, not just the image of my family, which was in my mind, I am indeed the physical reality of me in the thought and the mind of God. That because he thinks me, I am me. I am being created, something from nothing. So what does that mean? And, we're, and it, where am I being created from? From God's infinite power of his no, knowledge that is bound up with God himself. So he, God's knowledge is of infinite nature. Yes, it's got a definition to it. Knowledge, knowing, known, knower, true. But it's bound up with God, so it has an infinite quality. And by the fact that he's knowing me, what you know what he's imbuing me right now? With a infinite potential. Which means, what does it mean? An infinite potential? Because he's creating me this moment, anew, from the previous moment. So whatever the previous moment, the limitations was, doesn't have to be now. And he's giving me the power. It's hidden because it's coming from, you know, Hashem's infinite power. So it's hidden from me because if it was truly revealed, then I would be lose my sense of identity. But if I'm aware that I'm being animated now, not separate from God, but within him, and he's giving me an infinite power, at this moment, that's coming from him, by his awareness, I am. By his awareness, I've got that power. So then, when I'm coming to a difficult moment, I'm not going to say, why me? I'm going to say, okay, how do I use this power that I am bound up with God and to reveal the power within me the challenge right now that is obviously in order to bring something new to the world I can share with the world or with another person at least or just with myself that's a take home to live with That's amazing. That's beautiful. Any questions? Any comments? Any thoughts? How, how do we stay with this? Well, our everyday learning is for sure a, uh, uh, the path and how to deal with this. But beyond that, I'm still inviting you to uh, TRC because that's where we um, we drive it home in a deeper way because in, in community when we talk together as a community and we share and we then can be mentored guided uh, coached in a way that we can bring it to a new level. So, Davida, how will that change when Mashiach comes? So, oh, Davida is amazing. Always connected with Mashiach. And Hashem's Shekhinah will be revealed and not being contracted anymore. So, that's, yeah, when Mashiach comes, everything we're talking about over here is going to be a natural phenomenon. Yes, absolutely correct. Yeah, John um, created Ax Nihilo always in the imagination of God. Yes, I was created not not just in the imagination, right? Not just in the imagine. We're not just in the imagination of God. We're literally in him as a result 
Excellent. Thank you. All right. other questions all right I don't see any other questions all right so in conclusion let's just say hello to Julie from Florida Denise from New Jersey I missed you the other night um, who else did I miss to mention Joseph welcome and Yeah, people like the womb um, metaphor. Yeah, that's it's very comforting, and it's even much more than that, right? Uh, I hope I answered John's question. I'm not certain what it was, but I think it. Um, Vicky, is he animating us each moment? Um, so any moment is an infinite potential. Very good question, Vicky. So there's a, um, it, he's animating us with every breath, two and a half seconds or so. He's animating us with every moment and every subatomic moment. So it's on different dimensions. He's anim animating us every minute, every hour. As we learned that there's every hour comes a new um, configuration of the divine name that animates that hour and then goes back at the end of the hour back to its source together with all the good we did so on each level we're being animated each um, but yes every moment and that's the idea of a breath the, the the air comes in and you breathe it out that's life right in other words every every moment it's there's a there's a beat a heartbeat right a vitality a breath beat a vitality so yes every moment something from nothing so there's a drawn in vitality and then it's removed goes back to nothing it's something nothing something nothing that's a heartbeat that's a breath beat it's a heartbeat let's say every second a breath beat every two and a half seconds absolutely yeah, I hope that uh, clarifies. Who has the question on Instagram? I doubt it. Yes, it's always in the imagination, in the mind of God, as it were. Ali Reza. Welcome to Grateful Living. Thank you, Martin. Why God keeps commanding to do us to be right. I'm not clear on that keeps commenting us to be more righteous. We could live infinite potential so we can always grow. God's giving us more and more. Sarah says, yesterday and today's teachings came to a, f a complete, beautiful, full circle. Well, Hashem, my daughter, was saved last night. These teachings are a proof. Just amazing. Ooh. Okay. 
My father's good. Only better. Why is God constantly commanding us to be righteous? Because we have to fulfill our infinite potential. So he's always giving us more that we can fulfill. More life animating us constantly so we could become more. Absolutely. All right, folks. Amazing, all of you. Thank you all for being here. And again, I encourage you to take a look at um, tanyarabbi.org. And even if you can't be a part of it now, share with me your thoughts. And if there's something that you need, if you have a question, you're not certain of, um, please do contact me. I, Rabbi Ronnie Fine, coming to you from Chabad Zich and Kedeshim in Montreal, Canada, where it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you, Tanya. Have a, a wonderful and amazing day.